In this video, we will be going through the first act in the three-act structure and also those cheeky little prologues that get us hooked at the start of things that we consume. My name is Michael, I do videos on game design, and this video is part of a series on the three-act structure. Okay, prologue. The prologue is a scene or sequence that happens before act one that hooks the viewer. It isn't required at all, but many works will employ a prologue, so they start off with a bang and get the consumer engaged immediately. It can be anything that you like. It will quickly introduce the main character and what kind of person they are. It doesn't have to though. So a crazy undercover cop might get into a car chase with a suspect to start the movie off. But then again, The Dark Knight starts with a bank heist and no Batman in sight. An example from a game is the first scene at the start of The Last of Us that has Joel and Sarah trying to escape the city as the outbreak occurs. Here we see why Joel might be a gruff asshole at the start of the game and why he is initially very cold to Ellie. Another common inclusion for the prologue is a flash forward to the climax or another interesting part of the work. We might start off with our main character getting a drink and then the scene getting covered in blood like in The Gentleman. An example of this from a game is Nathan Drake waking up in the train at the start of Uncharted 2. It's not the climax, but we see him in this dire situation and wonder how he got there. And the sequence itself is more unique and engaging than the start of the first act with Nathan leaving it up on a beach. Later, we will play through how he ended up here. Hook the consumer, get them in quickly, pique their interest and we'll set things up in a moment in act one. If possible, don't miss an opportunity for a character intro and a bit of character building and try to make it relevant to the story. Act 1. Right, we are into the meat of the work, are you ready? Act 1 is a bit more rigid than the other two acts with a lot of specifics to cover. Act 1 is all about getting everything introduced and getting the main character to go on the adventure that we have planned for them. In the start, we want to introduce our character and establish the status quo. Prompt them to go on an adventure, which they will initially push back against, then remove the barriers preventing them from going on the adventure so they can decide to go. You may have introduced your character in the prologue, but otherwise it will get done here. Who is the main focus of this story? And what sort of person are they? Now, in many works, the introduction of a character will also come very close to when the consumer finds out what the character wants. So in a teen rom-com, you might meet the main character, then have their friends catch them staring at the popular girl in class. We also need to establish the status quo. The status quo is the normal world for this character. It is the day-to-day -day life the character will soon leave. This gives the consumer a baseline to judge future situations against, and often the character will return to this status quo having changed or establish a new status quo that can be compared to the initial one to see the effects of the main character's journey. So in Uncharted, the status quo is Nathan chilling on a beach. This is his normal. In The Last of Us, it's Joel doing smuggling runs in the dystopian military-controlled Boston. In Horizon Zero Dawn, it's Aloy living as a Nora outcast training for the Proving. The status quo is the character's normal, but it can be anything but normal if the story calls for it. If the character's normal day is deadlifting space monsters to massive crowds, that's fine. One reason we establish the status quo is so we can see what normal is, which will then be disrupted by the next part of Act 1, the routine killer. The routine killer is something that happens that disrupts the status quo for the main character. It has a bunch of different names, so keep an eye out, but the most common ones that I have found are the routine killer and the inciting incident. This can be anything you want it to be. It doesn't have to be big, it just has to be weird and wonderful enough to disrupt the status quo of the main character. The routine killer should generally have three characteristics to function correctly though. It needs to be unexpected and happen out of the blue. It needs to be sudden so the main character can't plan around it. And it needs to be difficult to undo or get back in order so the character is spurred into dealing with it and can't just write it in the next scene. In The Last of Us, suddenly the package Joel is smuggling is a live teenage girl who is immune and needs to be smuggled outside the walls. In Uncharted 2, it's Harry Flynn showing up in the Bahamas unannounced. The routine killer leads to the call to adventure. The established norm is to consider the routine killer and the call to adventure the same thing. I prefer to break them up into two separate narrative concepts. They can be the same thing if it fits that story, but sometimes you can string the audience along and develop things a bit before hitting them with the call to adventure. The call to adventure is a new development that urges the main character to heed it and embark on the quest of the narrative. This is where we introduce to the consumer what the main character will be doing at the start of Act 2. It's a good place to tell the audience what the work will be about, even if the character doesn't grasp the full scope of that yet. Luke is invited by Obi-Wan to go with him to Alderaan, I would make you the hand of the king. Your wife has died and she wanted her ashes scattered at the tallest peak. 
Now, if you want to get very hero's journey up in here, most main characters will now refuse the call to adventure. This helps the consumer see how big of a decision it is, how difficult the task might be, and helps the audience relate to their struggle. If the main character immediately accepts the call to adventure, they will seem shallow and one-dimensional. So instead, reasons to stay and reasons to heed the call are mulled over by the main character to further develop them. Don't make the reasons to stay outweigh the reasons to heed the call though, or the decision to eventually heed the call will seem weird. Spend some time going over the reasons to go and the reasons to stay. Maybe the character has a partner that they would leave behind. Maybe they have safety and security, but not what they truly desire. The path ahead is unknown and may be dangerous, but this is the big break that they have been looking for. Luke initially pushes back, saying that he needs to help his uncle at the farm and can't just go running off with Obi-Wan. Atreus is not yet ready to travel up the mountain and must prove to Kratos that he is capable. The heist is way too risky. People have died trying. The last part of the first act is the first act plot twist. Big ol' side note. For the purposes of this structure, a twist is the term used for a big moment of change in the narrative. It doesn't necessarily mean a true twist in the traditional kind of way that people think of it, as in a piece of information that will blindside you and recontextualize things. He was a double agent the whole time, the Fight Club twist, I see dead people. It just means that things are shifting in the narrative in a notable way. We'll discuss more in Act 2, but here in Act 1, we end on the Act 1 plot twist. And side note, the Act 1 plot twist is designed to knock down or recontextualize the obstacle that was keeping the main character from heeding the call. This will obviously allow them to heed the call, and in many cases, it makes heeding the call the only real sensible option. We have just spent some time mulling over the decisions and getting to know the character and their motivations. Maybe there has been some world building to help us understand their point of view. Time to go on an adventure. Maybe a stranger shows up where he isn't supposed to and engages you in a fight of the gods while your son hides in your feeble wooden hut. Maybe a bunch of youth and also your father figure gets slaughtered and you need to go out into the world and find the culprits. That would lead them back home. So now we have an adventure calling and much less in our way. Nothing is stopping us barreling headfirst into act two and getting stuck into the guts of this adventure in the next video. There is a card on screen now to go to that video once it's out, and this has been part of a series of videos about using the three-act structure with a focus on games. I'll see you in part three.